Uh, the reason I'm going to focus on strongly coupled sectors and check one formal is that that offers a much greater range of uh, scaling dimensions for operators. And uh, I'm going to assume there are no light composite fermions with masses below the compositeness scale. And so uh, the light neutrinos have to be Majorana. And uh, uh, so then, if you further assume the hidden sector has some kind of an approximate lepton number, so the low energy Lagrangian should, should have a form similar to this, have, have a form of this inverse CISO, which is, uh, so this is the standard Lagrangian for the inverse CISO. So this N is the composite state, composite fermion with which the neutrinos will mix. So can you remind again this inverse seesaw? Why is it called inverse again? Uh, I'll, it. Oh. I'll show you later. So the idea here is this is the standard Lagrangian for the inverse seesaw. And the only difference is going to be that for us, these ends are going to be composite. Uh, 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 may I ask you, uh, uh, you know, your hidden sector, you know, it's uh, like a kind of mirror to, to, to normal one or because why, uh, uh, say, a hidden Newton should have a mass uh, comparable with a normal Newton? No, I'm not going to assume that going forward. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm just assuming that a hidden sector form, form exists which can give rise to a composite fermion. But I'm not going to assume it's QCD like, or I'm not going to assume that the composite scale is the same as lambda QCD. Or no, no, QCD. but uh, you probably know that there are these people like, say, uh, Zora Berijani, who are uh, uh, following this idea of, of mirror uh, 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 particles and uh, relate, no, and uh, in, in this picture of, with mirror particles, you know, then uh, the hidden sector would be the one which is indeed would be almost degenerate with, uh, with our particles. Right. Yeah, but that's not the direction of the. Mm -hmm. I see. So, all right, so how does this work? So this is the Lagrangian for the inverse system. So from these two terms, when the Higgs gets over there, the neutrino mixes with NC. And then, then since, since, uh, the, 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 so that then there's a, there's a light state which contains an admixture of NC. And so this term will then lead to a neutrino, as will then give a mass to that light state. So if it was just these two terms, the neutrino would mix with NC and one of the linear correlations would be massless. And then this term, which is the lepton number violating term, gives a mass to that light state. So that's the mass. So in other words, if mu is zero, the, this extra particle that you add is the Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, you it's, cannot it's, generate. Yes, exactly. So, but, 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 but then you also have uh, Majorana Newtons as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Newton. There's, there's, so there's a pseudo Dirac pair. Which is Majorana? Uh, yeah, but uh, sorry. For example, in this way, uh, uh, in in our real world, uh, do, do you think that there is kind of uh, you know a splitting between uh, Majorana and neutrons in a, in a, in our real world? Arkady probably is confused, thinking that N here is as for neutron. No, so this is not a neutron. Arkady. This is just a, this is just some composite fermion of the hidden set. No, no, right, but once you have, uh, you know, uh, this kind of mixing, uh, Newton's with Nitin, then uh, uh, Newton could also could be Majorana as well. Yeah, but this N is not the neutron end. This N is just some composite fermion. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. No, but once you introduce this mu square term and squares, you already uh, induced Majorana, right? Yeah, so it's Majorana, but it's some composite fermion which is now Majorana. Yeah, no, no, right, right, but but I mean, normal Newton could be Majorana, uh, but, but then you have two of them. Uh, I mean, with with closed masses. Yes. So this is simply and it, it would be still four component overall. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. It's, it will be pseudo derived, but the two states are really not wrong. Yeah. It's not really, it's not in that sense, it's not really good. This Yukawa coupling, I mean, it could have in the normal C sort, it would have been L H N C, right? And N N would have been zero. Yeah, that depends on what you call M N C. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. Really I, I put M N to the zero, and if I replace the N with N C, that's just <coughs> usual C sort, right? Correct. Yeah. And so yeah. what you're doing now is you're adding in this extra Dirac term. That's yeah. So so for, yeah. But so, why is there no L H N C coupling? That's forbidden by. Oh uh, yeah. So I'm assuming that so so the, there's another version of this. So there's several models of neutral mass of the system. One version of it you have L H N and L H N C. Oh okay. So there is a model like that. I think. But you probably then can redefine it, right? Uh, there is still a freedom of redefinition uh, uh, yeah, or mixing between <laughs> N and N C, right? So you can you forbids, can always put it in this form, probably. But nothing forbids that you call a couple. Correct, right? Well, but then, then, but then, then you have a, uh, additional ways of getting rid of it uh, by uh, redefining N and N C, right? Well, okay, so so roughly speaking, the logic here. Okay, so there, that is, there is, yes, yeah, there is, I yeah. think. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, if you because it's neutral, it's, neutral. it's, it's, neutral. Neutral. it's, neutral. it's not gauged. Right? Oh, because so, it's neutral. Maybe you can. Yeah, yeah I can. I mean, like I cannot do electron plus positron sure, transformations, sure, sure. right? But I guess here yeah, you can define. I think so. I think well, so. If you, especially if you add n squared term, right? Yeah. yeah. You, you complete the square of the two mass terms, right? Yeah. And you have a new field. Yeah. yeah, you can. Uh, I think in that sense, it's generic. I mean, think this is generic, like this, right? Yeah. Uh, here, look, here, here's what I would say. So assume the hidden sector has a lot of, I don't know, I don't know, maybe one symmetry, which is broken by this term, and which is broken by this term. So because of this term, you identify the U1 symmetry of the hidden sector with that term. Right. And so all these terms except that one respect the kind of lepton on this metric. And so this is a small breaking of the lepton on this metric. Yeah, right. Well, what I'm saying is that even if you write an NC term, mm -hmm. then you can uh, define linear combinations yeah. of N and NC yeah, such that it will return the same form here. Uh, well, what will happen then is one will get Majorana. But the Majorana term is already present uh, as NC squared. Yeah, but yeah, you, the only thing is that you might not preserve the hierarchy of you much smaller than right. I am. That's that's a different story. But uh, other, other than that, uh, I think it's it's a generic. Yeah. So yeah, so, so the, to get the, the small uh, neutrino masses, one needs either bounded, so, so one needs want some combination of these guys to be much smaller than I am. Which can happen if, uh, if the breaking of lambda number is small, or if this parameter lambda is small, or some combination of those. And uh, so that can naturally happen if these if these terms arise from terms of dimension greater than four. Um, yeah. Now the thing is that. Since the heavy mass eigenstate, the, the heavy combination of these guys, it contains an admixture of the standard model of neutrino. It interacts with the standard model through, through mixing suppressed optimus to the W and Z. So, uh, so, the, so the idea is that you have an elementary neutrino that mixes with this composite state. In the component, the, the hidden sector, strong sector, is a small amount of lateral number violation. And as a consequence of that, the light neutrino ends up being my run. So there are probably there are some smooth uh, deformations of this when you can uh, recast all that as uh, mixing with the tau as a code supply states. And that's the right, where it comes from. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Tony played with no, no, that like 20 that's, years that's, ago. That's probably where it comes from. Right? Right. 
Wait, a question. So do you need this NC squared term to come from some higher dimension operator in order to be small? Like if it's. Yeah, you could, you could it's, also argue that it's coming from a. That it, it's, it's zero in the limit of exact lepton number. And so it's a small breaking of lepton number. One could also argue that. Right. Okay. So you don't need any of these to be composite in order to get the correct scales? Well, let me put it like this. So you, so one would need, so I'm interested in MN lighter than uh, uh, TV or so, just because I'm interested in experiments. So one, one has to generate that scale, so it's not connected to the Higgs or any other scale we know in physics or any other way. One has to explain why that's not the Planck scale. Then one has to explain why either one of these or these is small. And uh, in principle, yeah, yeah, so, that, so that's, the, that's the challenge. The claim is in this class of models, I have an explanation of why this can be parametrically small. And why these um, these parameters can be parametrically small. Okay, but if you didn't necessarily care about it, yeah. like observable, yeah. like MN could just be very large, and you could argue that MUC is small because it's like a special. Sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a lot. It's just not. Uh, So, so when studying the phenol, I'm going to assume that the similar neutrinos are the lightest composite state. There's no gold stones or other state. Uh, I, I wonder, uh, together with this uh, diagram, could it be mixing of electron with proton? Mixing of the electron with the proton? Electron and proton, because no, you, you have the, your uh, lepton uh, uh, spinner, right? Uh, which is in standard model uh, contains the electron uh, together with neutrino, right? Okay, and then we introduce your interaction, then in th this mixing, then I would be wondering about mixing of, say, uh, normal electron with also composite states, right? Which is charge, charge states like a proton. Yeah, but uh, the thing here is that. Uh... There is a barren number, Kali. <laughs> <laughs> the barren number is concerned. No, remember the thing you want to keep in mind. Yeah. Is no, but but here here it's the same, right? Is it, so so a, a, a electric charge is the same, uh, uh, and baryon number and leptonic number is broken anyway. No, no. no. only lepton number. But... Well, because n is a hidden surface state, you only break lepton. Number. It's it's not a it has no baryon number. <laughs> You will yeah. get uh, neutrino is double beta decay out of this Lagrangian, but not uh, positron proton mixing. I think Arkady is saying that it's similar to the electron mixing with the proton and then maybe generating a mass for the electron. Yeah. And in this partial composite story. Right, but, but this is not what you're doing, though, right? Yeah, the thing is that the NS has nothing to do with yeah. the barrier. That's the thing. Okay, so this is the spectrum of states. We have these light partially composite neutrinos. We have these composite states N and NC, and then we have this continuum, which is basically you know whatever is composes the CFT, they're gonna call unparticles for the gamma band. So if, it, if the only states we could see are the lightest, are the light neutrinos plus these, the, the lightest states here, it, the, the spectrum looks just like a conventional inverse system. But uh, at, at higher energies, it looks like a period of time. Uh, it, since the states in the hidden sector are standard model singles, um, even very low values of the composite scale are allowed by data. Um, I'm going to focus on values of, of the composite scale, uh, which are below the electronic scale. So, so these states would have definitely been discovered if they had had quantum, if they were not singles. Right? So, uh, so using ABS CFT, we can relate this construction to. Class of RS models. Right? And there's a lot of 
paper studying neutrino masses in RS. But the big, big difference between what I'm doing and, and doing most of those papers is that um, in the RS model, they're trying to study the hierarchy problem. Right? And um, so most theories, since the standard models fermions have to get mass, the standard model fermions, the charged fermions, are all partially composite. Right? And that forces the composite mass scale to be above the electroweak scale. Whereas here, I'm going to take the composite mass scale low below the weak scale. And going through the literature, I can only find one ADS model which is similar to what I'm trying to do. Because you're going to see the female is going to be very different. Like the scales. What was the original? Sorry. What was the original motivation for this inverse seesaw? So it was just to have the lepton number violation be really small. That was the idea. Yeah. And so, so one thing I realized is that pretty much every model of neutrino masses was written by Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> every combination you can think of, <laughs> Robbie has written at some point. Yeah. This way you can have a phenomenology with, say, TV or lower scale right handed neutrinos. And the coupling to them is actually much larger than, than, than the tiny thing that you would have in a normal cell, right? So it's a model that has a, could have significant uh, left, left to right mixing angle, some sort, uh, right? But then, uh, then have no, usually in a normal CISO, then, then you have a gigantic neutrino mass, right? right. Here you keep the neutrino mass small, but you're going to have a more oh, interesting thing. So always. another name for this would just be pseudo Dirac with a small pseudo splitting. Yeah, yeah. Pseudo Dirac. Yeah. 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 But reading the scale to explain the neutrino mass, uh, the required uh, you know, pseudo Dirac neutrino mass can be much lighter compared to normal CISO, which uh, typically requires gas scale or even high. Yeah. 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 Right. There, there, they only have one subtraction class, right, which is lambda V or uh, square over MN. But here you have now, if you stare at this formula, right, really the thing that determines the phenol is what is this mass M and what is this coupling lambda? And here you have a way to make the smallness mostly come from this view. So this coupling can still be observable and this and then could still be TV scale. So basically you do need a very tiny left on number violation, right? Compared to the usual yeah. seesaw, which is huge, right? right? It can be M Planck, M N uh, right. intermediate. Here it's just a tiny breaking and left on them. Right. Alternatively, one could set this you see equal to MN and then take lambda very, very small. That's another direction one could go. But that, that is the direction which doesn't have observable signals. So people usually try to focus on this reasonably large to be observable and keep that. But are you going to explain the smallness of that? Sure. Small? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, this class of models has implications for a, a lot of our current and future experiments. So, some of the things I'm going to discuss so, the composite the scales below an MEV or so are dis disfavored by cosmology. Delta and FFT mostly. This has implications for UDE conversion, UDE gamma, various meson decay modes. W and Z decays, neutrino was double beta decay, and also spectral distortion in the theory. So that all these different experiments are, will be able to probe this scenario in different mass ranges, depending on what the composite is going on. So let me talk a little bit about some of these signals. The W boson produced at the LHC can decay into a charged lepton plus a bunch of these. Uh, Plus, plus states in this hidden sector. And then this what hidden is sector, the mass scale for capital M that they should be looking for? Anywhere from 10 GV down to an MEV. So 10 or 20 GV down to So that we go down to decay the charge lepton plus some of these hidden sector states. And, and this hidden sector will be kind of patternized by the shower. And then you can have multiple composite, composite neutrinos and in the final state. These composite neutrinos are not stable. Although some of them 
low slightly longer time scale, they decay back to standard model. And if they're lost, they're below a few GB, you get displaced signals. It's a very striking signal. You get multiple displaced vertices from a single W decay. Right? So that's kind of a, I don't know any other model which, which, which gives rise to this kind of a signal. It's kind of a you know, smoking gun kind of thing. There are lots of models that do that. <laughs> There are lots of models that have displaced decay. No, no, but uh, multiple displaced decays where the decays are heavy nuclear. No, they're not a problem. Right? If you start playing with the kind of a standard model neutral sectors at, uh, at the MEV to 10 G range, there are many more model orientations with multiple decays. Okay, well, sure. Right. You, mean, you still mean composite and dark sector? Strong interacting dark well, no, Not necessarily. I'm just saying that uh, if you see such signature, it doesn't prove that you have oh, a sure, sure, right. sector. Right? It doesn't, doesn't prove this is a particular realization. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. yeah but I, I but, still think you need a composite sector that couples through this portal. Well, I can write a very simple model that gives a, a k short to 12 leptons decays at the observable level. <laughs> no, but you would be multiple decays. K short to 12 leptons. I mean, but that's, not, but that's not enough, right? You need, to sh you need to reconstruct multiple vertices, each of which gives. Uh, a heavy neutral lepton signature. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so sorry, Chuck. So what happens? Sorry. So what hap What helps satisfy the cosmology bounds here? Because if you're at you're in the ten GeV to MeV range, is that is that right? Yeah. Then is it this going to affect uh, delta n effective? I mean, the expansion of the universe. Is it because the Yukawa coupling is really small? So what yeah. What will happen is that these things will annihilate out of the bar condition. That will happen above an MEV. So the neutrino temperature will rise. Yeah, but then this is all, yeah, before, they'll go up, that will happen. But if it's before decoupling, you don't know it. So that's why he has an MEV there. So that's why ah, the lower okay. bound in the composite is MEV. I see. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So the same thing can happen in beam gun. The lambda below a few GV, the mesons produce the beam guns and they became the camel sticks. Containing multiple single neutrinos. So again, you get displaced vertices. So this thing can these these composite these, this hidden circuit can propagate in loops and construct a mu to e gamma and mu to e conversion. Right? And so the bounds on mu to e conversion are supposed to improve by four orders of magnitude over the next five ten years. So the power of four. If the composite mesquite is below one hundred and eighty. Neutrinoless double beta decay gets suppressed, so you get a suppression of the rate. And uh, so you can have very late decays of these relic composite single neutrinos. And uh, since they can decay into electrons and things like that, they give rise to spectral distortions in the CMB. This is another signal. So, uh, well, uh, we are going for time. I won't get time to discuss all of these. So I'll try and get through as many of them as I can. So let me talk a little bit about the, the model itself. So here's the, so here's the, the story. Uh, to take the hidden circuit to be a CFP deformed by some finery, the, 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 the deformation will grow, grow large in the infrared, and eventually trigger breaking of the CFP at some scale, which I'm going to call lambda, the composite scale. So the spectrum of composite such things is assumed to include this uh, single fermion N and MC, uh, which if it was just the hidden sector, these would be, uh, I mean, if it was just this part of the Lagrangian, these would be direct. They would have a mass and then have a lambda. Okay. So this, this, this is the Lagrangian so far. So now introduce a neutrino portal coupling between the standard model and the hidden sector. And if this operator all has some overlap with N, you end up with this interaction. And then 
add to the CFP decimation, which breaks uh, lambda number by two units. If this has an overlap with uh, NC squared as low energies, this is what we have. At this point, what has the minimum pieces required to generate the, the inverse C solar grind? And so all the pieces that are absolutely needed for the inverse C solar are, are there. But of course, the theory is strongly coupled. So in other things, whether you want them or not, are going to be there. And uh, so let's see what those are. Okay, so but before I do that, I have to, we have to talk about the sizes of the various things. So there's some restrictions of the scaling dimensions. So from unitarily, uh, the dimension of ON has to be um, greater than or equal to P half. So of course, the fermion operates in the CFT. Uh, and if this was bigger than five half, then uh, uh, there's additional terms that are required for consistency. You need additional counterpoint. And so I'm going to restrict this range of scaling dimensions. And another restriction is that we don't want to generate the Weinberg operator uh, with the UV coefficient. We don't want to, uh, yeah, so we want the, the, the dominant contribution to the neutrino masses to come from low energy, from our, from our from the low energy dynamics. So that also leads to a condition of the scaling dimension, which turns out to be this. So these are so, uh, yes, but one doesn't have complete freedom in the scaling dimensions of this and this. Uh, and there's also restrictions of the low energy parameters. So um, since, uh, yeah, so since these are, since these are coming from, um, deformations of the, the, the CFT at most they can be about one. So this has to be less than lambda, and this has to be less than lambda. And so this translates into a, a bound and the mixing between the standard model neutrinos and the standard. So this is the, the mixing between the the, 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 neutrin, the standard model neutrinos and the, the ends. And these conditions translate to this bound of the mixing angle. It has to be less than one, one, and it has to be greater than one. So then, um, this is the final expression for the neutrino masses. It depends on the various parameters like this. And the point now is that, uh, so this is actually a question for me. So you can see that. You, you see, you get many powers of this ratio of the compositeness scale to the UV scale, which would be the Planck scale. And it's raised to these powers, it's dependent on the scaling dimension. By choosing the scaling dimension, that range, even in this restricted range, it's possible to choose scaling dimensions for which uh, the neutrino masses are small. Right? So, starting with the theory in which there are no small parameters, everything is out of one. Just the choice of scaling dimensions leads to small neutrino masses. That's the that's the, that's the so point. then you said that there was no uh, 5D version of this. There is a 5D. There, there, there wasn't, and then we constructed. Oh, you one. constructed, but but it, but if I just was to take a guess at the 5D version, you put all the laptop number violation on the UV, and then you put the right hand neutrino on the IR. That's how it would work. Uh, so the right hand neutrino is the bulk. In the fault, but somehow it sees a very suppressed uh, lepton number violation from the UV ray. Uh, so, um, so, the way, so, so, so the way, so, so let's, let's think about it. So let's go back to the, the, the theory. So, so, of course, the CFT is just a ADS model. Right? The OS is some scalar operator in the bulk, goes otherwise for the kind of thing. This, uh, uh, this, so this is a bulk fermion, ON. and similarly, ONC, they are bulk fermions. Um, so, this thing is a scalar operator in the bulk, which is sourced from the UV beam. And then, uh, that's the source of the lepton number yeah, of right. 
And now there's a trilinear coupling between that scalar and the NNNC. Oh, I see. In the bulb. In the bulb. Because oh. that's the analog of the CFT 3 point function. Mm -hmm. That CFT 3 point function translates into a trilinear coupling in the bulb between these two. Yes. And uh, even though the paper isn't out, well, the full calculation matches exactly. It beautifully matches the data. There's one restriction in the CFT, which is that the dimension, you know, in the CFT, there's always an operator which has to, if you have an operator O, O N, because it's in the larger limit, there's an operator O N, O N, which is exactly twice the scaling dimension. And so there's some additional restrictions in the scaling dimension because of large N, which are not there in the general scale. But yeah, everything matches beautifully, actually. Okay, so this is just to convince you that even if you take the UV scale to be the pi scale and you start with order one uh, dimensionless couplings, there's choices of scaling dimensions for which everything works in a very realistic and clear um, manner. Okay, so as I was saying, I wrote down all the terms I wanted, but there are going to be terms that I, I, I wasn't that are not necessary, but which are going to be generated because the theory is strongly coupled. For example, there's this term, which is lepton number of other things, parametrically sort of this. And it turns out not to have much effect, actually. And then um, you also get these four fermion terms. And these are actually very important in cosmology. If you open the literature on inverse C what you'll often find is that composing the space below a GED, so those elementary models of scale, models where the mass of n is a GV or below are disfavored because you run into these cosmological bounds. And because of these four fermion terms, um, those bounds can be, are, are not, don't apply to the, this composite model. And the reason is, so remember the n's mix with the neutrinos, but because of this four fermion operator, you can have two n's going into an n and a neutrino. And so that's an annihilation mode for the n. And so the number of n's becomes exponentially suppressed and uh, you can annihilate away efficiently. And that's, that usually doesn't happen in a regular inverse So if you look at the literature in inverse so they usually focus on scales above a GED. All right. Okay, so let me talk about uh, wider scale. So, uh, So, so at colliders, the decays of W bosons and Z bosons can give rise to charged electron plus um, potentially multiple composite single neutrinos. And since the single neutrinos decay back to the standard model, so they can decay to L plus pi or N to N and L and L or to P. So, for example, these are very striking signals. And for composite scales below 5 GB, they are displaced signals. Um, so, yeah, easy to observe in principle. Um, so, there's a calculation one can do to calculate the rate using the methods of unparticle physics. Um, yeah, so, the Tony, we didn't actually do this using uh, RS, we did it using the CFT. But we, but we made a check with using RS, which is actually did very nicely. So, uh, yeah, um, well, the total width is infrared divergence. And um, this divergence is regulated by the fact that the conformal symmetry is not exact. So the hidden surface states are not massless. We regulate the divergence of the mass of the lightest composite state. So the distribution of particles is P towards the region of low invariant mass, which means that the theory prefers final states with just a few. Composite single neutrinos. Uh, so, what this plot is showing is that depending on the scaling dimension, between 70 and 95% of the events have only one composite single neutrino, the final state. So, the exact fraction depends on the scaling dimension. Even though these striking signals are possible, 
we are less likely than the conventional giving you some like neutral electron substitution. Um, but they're not very unlikely. They could happen as many as a third of the time. Uh, so we can use the fact that uh, events with just one end are the same uh, as the conventional inverse system. There are all these searches people do for heavy neutral electrons. Um, so we can just map those searches into this model. Uh, so uh, we place limits on the the limits are usually placed on this mixing of the heavy neutral electrons with electrons. We focus on this primary, assuming that the, 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 the ends are quasi degenerate. And so um, this is the mixing angle square of this side. This is the mass of the composite particle. And so, um, so this heavy, heavier mass range is relevant for W and Z decays. Uh, so you can see the mixing angles of order 10 raised to minus 5, etc. Uh, 10 raised to minus 4 or 5 or something like that. Mixing angle squared there is 10. Now, the, the, the high domain LHC will produce 10 raised to 12 Ws. So um, so that luminosity along with the displaced vertex searches will quickly extend the reach. So, so this is the projected reach. The gray is the existing limits, and this is the projected reach. So it can extend an order of magnitude or two below beyond what's uh, the current limits. And of course, if a future lepton collider could go even further, but just the LHC eventually will be able to close, uh, will be able to close a significant. Uh, See, this is better than U to E. U to E projection. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, 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 let me go back on side. So, so this, this, this gray shade is U to E conversion and U to E, yeah, U to E conversion, basically. Under the assumption that the mixing between the flavor is large. So it's mostly weaker than it's mostly weaker than the collider searches, except in this heavier mass range. So, so the claim is that uh, eventually in the heavier mass range, the UDE is just going to win. And uh, the colliders are going to. But there's some reason where the collider is cooled pretty well, but it's the lighter mass region. So well, what about the events with the, the multiple composite neutrinos? Um, and uh, so here for various scaling dimensions, you're looking for you just look at events with um, uh, either a hundred. Uh, Multiple n events or 10 multiple n events. And the reach, uh, you can see you can, in principle, go pretty far below the current limits, right? several, orders of, several orders of magnitude in the mixing angle spread. Now, the reason to focus on is this region, because in this region, mostly, even though you produce a bunch of states, they mostly decay outside the detector. So, I, so in this mass, in this region of the parameter space, larger masses, um, it's probably going to be a tremendous improvement in, in, in reach. Okay. And since these are, events are very striking, it's, uh, 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 it's kind of it's, it's, it's a smoking gun kind of signal. I disagree that uh, <laughs> it's not seen. I think it's very hard to get this unless you have a strongly coupled hitting set that couples through the neutrino portal. It doesn't have to be a neutrino mass model, but you need a hidden set that couples through the neutrino portal. Um, and so something similar can happen at beam gaps. You can also, can also place limits from, the, use the limits on heavy neutral electrons for beam gaps, plus limits. And uh, uh, these are the current limits from beam, beam gaps. 
Now, this is the future of the limited funnel in view this time of the end. So again, there's going to be some, some improvement in the light mass when it's on So uh, is a contribution to me to neon G minus two. Uh, it's the wrong sign to explain the anomaly, so too bad. <laughs> uh, you can also get uh, mu to e gamma mu to e conversion. Um, and uh, well, why why would it be even a, a significant correction? Uh, so you want to split to what the W and the singlet neutrino? Uh, yeah, so this this is the kind of correction to the neutrino propagator. Okay. So in one way to say it is uh, in, in RS language, the neutrino is mixing with the free carrier okay. it's, it's like a, it has to be like a hundred percent effect to 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 correct the G minus two, right? Because the size of the discrepancy is exactly. The same size as the electroweak correction. So yeah, these states could be lighter than so. So so this so if this okay. So if this if this if this if this sector is lighter than the W, um, that's fine. Even then, then this well, this do have support of the, of the around the mass of the W. That's that's right. right. So so, so if, you, if you remove this uh, blue blue. Uh, Sausage there, right? And it, it gives the exact action to, to uh, like on the order of the discrepancy, right? I mean, very close, actually, right? Uh, units of 10 minus 9. And uh, now adding this thing, it's you're saying it's not a smallness. Well, it's, it's the suppression is coming from the mixing. Line. It's, it's right. suppressed by the mixing. Next time the okay. mixing is small, it's it's, 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 then, then it's smaller than electroweak, and then, then that's it. I think there's a, in principle, we're hoping it can be sizable enough in a regime where it's slightly heavier to provide the, the, the chiral fleet. The chiral fleet, yeah. okay. So, so okay. In, the, in, in this new degree of is lighter than uh, uh, light, okay. light, then there's no uh, enhanced contribution from the small mixing. If it's heavier, supported by chiral fleet, we may contribute more. However, yep. and by design, the contribution Cancels by the pseudo Dirac contribution. Right, right. So that's why we didn't support it now. Okay. But the two regimes have different reasons to, to suppress. So typically, also, if you have a large uh, value of the chiral flip, you may have deviations in H to the mu because then, then the large chiral flip also feeds into the mass of the mu. That, that, that concerns the source of the, 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 the this enhanced, right? The, the mass is not from Higgs, then it is in the zone. I think, but, but anyway, we, we they, they're the enhanced the chiral flip cancels, anyways, from this single Yeah, so it's I small, remember this so it's small, more or less, right? right. It's, uh, yeah, then you, you, you have a bit of the wrong side to begin with. You just must spend a lot of time to. Uh, this is not the solution of our own. But one can get even, uh, one can get. Uh, Contribution to mu to e gamma, uh, which is what we concluded, uh, and for mu to e conversion. And uh, uh, mu to e conversion, there's, there's multiple diagrams, and, uh, uh, and uh, as I showed you guys from the talk, uh, this is the mu to e projection, and you tend to extend the reach quite a bit, uh, especially at heavier masses. Uh, so, uh, um, there's only, I only have a couple of minutes, uh, and uh, I certainly won't get through the whole thing. So, uh, so I guess there's uh, the sections I have left are the tools that will be in the day and uh, technology and academics. So, fun? Fun? Just good, yeah. <laughs> You can have five minutes. Yeah, you, I think you started at five. You started, I think, at 35. Okay. Right. So, uh, all right. So, neutrinos double beta decay, the characteristic 
its scale is order 100 MeV. And that, that, that's said by the spacing between nucleons and the nucleon. So the nucleons have to see each other for double data nuclear. And uh, so the rate for this process depends on the lepton number of violating contributions to the propagator at scales of order 100 MeV. Now, if this composite scale is much larger than 100 MeV, you can integrate everything out. You get a Weinberg operator. It's the same Weinberg operator that controls the neutrino masses as the neutrino is double data. That's the usual high scale CSOS story. And so there's nothing new there. That's just any, in any CSOS model will give you. Um, the interesting thing happens in the opposite of the limit. The composite scale is much lighter than 100 MeV. So then one has to compute this matrix element, which contains this T, uh, CFT three point function. And just doing the scaling dimensions, one can obtain the, the scaling of this matrix element. And remember, this had to be this combination had to be bigger than one. So that the UV contributions to the Weinberg operator were sub. There were no U. Yeah, you will contribute to one group operator the sub -dominant. So this ratio is smaller than one, and it's raised to a positive part. This is a form factor suppression of the double Cosmology. Um, so the hidden set in any was in thermal contact with the standard model to these processes. And the net effect is to bring the hidden set into equilibrium. And um, by, by some estimates, one can convince oneself that for, once you're, uh, for, for the parameters that will give you real estate neutrino masses, you're always in, you're always in equilibrium with the, the hidden sector is always in equilibrium with the standard model for pretty much any interesting range of compositeness scale. Um, so, um, so then once the temperature falls below the mass of the composite states, they start annihilating out of the bar. And um, this is the most efficient annihilation process. And we can obtain the, the number density of the freezer. And it turns out that the number density is exponentially suppressed in pretty much the entire parameter range. That's because of those uh, the, the theory strongly coupled. So you have those four Fermi operators with big coefficients. And um, yeah, so that's why the cosmology here is fairly fairly stable. Uh, all right. So um, yeah. So CMB observations indicate the neutrinos of three screening of the neutrinos. So there's limits on this scales from the constraint of neutrino free screening that constraints. That constraint is fairly weak. It just says the composite scale is more than 100 and 100 EV. But there's also a bound from delta and effective, which says that the composite scale should be above an MeV. And that's not a that's not a very hard bound, but I think it is. Uh, it's not. Yeah, I don't think it's a very hard bound, but it's not. It seem easy to, to avoid it. So let me talk about the signal here. So there's going to be a few ends left over that one I need to do. There's going to be some relic abundance of the end. And they're eventually going to decay into final state. That if you get three neutrinos or an electron and positive from the um, The thing is that if the mass of N is below 50 MeV, these details occur when the temperature of the bark is below a key. The interesting thing about that temperature is that at that temperature in the CMB, like electron scattering, uh, elastic scattering of electrons and uh, with photons is still going on. But number changing processes are, 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 not, are, are not active anymore. So, so these decays are going to dump electromagnetic energy into the bar. Uh, and uh, since the since number of changing processes have stopped, there's going to be uh, the, there's going to be a, a chemical potential in the CMB. 
and uh, uh, even though it's very small, n is minus two, it is large, potentially large enough to be observed in future series. Right. Uh, there is a, a potential limit for supernovae. Uh, uh, if the stable diffusers escape, they can offer a new mechanism for cooling. If the, because of the compositeness scale is much above 800 MeV, uh, the number of these things escaping is, is very small, so it doesn't really matter. So less than 800 MeV. These things are trapped in the supernova. But their number density is only significant for composite scales below 40 MeV. So, so below 40 MeV, these are going to have some effect on the supernova dynamics. Maybe there's a bound there, but it's probably going to have some effect. But you know, given that we don't know that much about supernova dynamics, it's not clear how big of this point this is. The decay outside may, may, may be constrained. So some and struggles outside and decays and so observable E plus and minus. And then E plus annihilates, you get the gamma ray kind of coincident with supernova exclusion, of which we have observed none from the 1987- So you're saying that the ends are trapped in some, eventually the supernova explodes, they come outside and then- Well, they right, right. So, so there were like this, this, uh, um, um, in 1987, right? There were, were uh, gamma ray satellites, uh, 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 or X ray, gamma ray satellites on orbit uh, looking elsewhere, but, but oh, they had 10 MeV uh, gammas have penetrating power, and then uh, they, they were observed none, no increase during the, the explosion, right? So, so this is very constraining for anything that can kind of struggle out of the supernova and then decay, right? Which might be your case. So that, that, is, that is the uh, one, one constraint you may want to yeah. check out. You know, you, you have people like Gustavo probably still there, right? Mm -hmm. So who, who has worked on something very, very similar. You can ask him. Okay. Uh, okay. So, okay, so we have conclusions. Uh, so, so, so this class of theories can explain the smallness of the internal masses. Uh, so these models have interesting implications for a lot of different experiments, larger beam guns, lepton phase evaluation, which might cover the other before CMB. Very characteristic collider signals involving multiple divisions of lepton's. And uh, current and near future experiments are going to probe a big chunk of the primary space. Any further questions? Isn't 40 MeV a little bit high for the temperature? For the temperature? The numbers I hear range from 10 to 40. Right? Yeah, but I think 10 is 40. The, the worry that you have with 40 is that it would create a gigantic stochastic neutrino background that would have been observed already. Oh, I see. 40 is the high speed. Okay, that's cool. So maybe a little bit more of the current is not going to be. <laughs> you haven't thought of UV inflation. So. The scale UV coefficient? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I had to assume something about the scaling dimensions yeah, of all three. So, yeah. so, so that's awesome. way beyond what you're trying to do. Right, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because because the thing is any UV completion which is deeply coupled with the UV, the question is going to be uh, this O N, right? So 
So I want this to have a scaling dimension between three halves and five halves. So three halves is a weekly couple limit, so that's not important. So then how do I get it something? It has to be a singlet under its own, that combination has to be a singlet under its own gauge and fraction. Right? So Fermi on a scale. Fermi on a scale, but that's right at five halves. Right. So it's, it is, I think it's not easy. Yeah, because uh, if you restrict yourself to that range, it's not easy. Right? Yeah. But okay. Uh, if not, let's thank Chaco again and we can continue. Thank you. You kind of the trap that you said the supernova. You're saying when the supernova took place, there's just a shock wave coming out. That's much smaller. Some of them can escape, right? I mean, not not. I mean, like normal neutrinos also escape. Okay, so there will be a neutrino sphere for this and capital N. Yeah, once they escape, they they actually decay. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. If they decay to positrons, yeah. uh, uh, then they will create gamma rays as well because co yeah, sure. will So I, I thought that would be a small flag in the last moment. Uh, uh, your cons 